Welcome to an inside look at the REACH initiative. Today we're exploring best practices in STEM education utilizing Module 1, Measuring Wind, from the REACH curriculum. Topics covered include how to ask investigative questions, building background knowledge with your students, facilitating STEM skill building, and implementing the module. Today we're going to try to figure out, well, what is wind if we can't even see it? What do we know about wind? We know it's around us, but what is wind? So to do that, we're going to use a board here um, and we're gonna have you guys help me kind of brainstorm a list of ideas of what is wind. Okay, anybody else have uh, an idea of wind? All right. So as I'm looking here at our results, I noticed some uh, really interesting ideas. The first one I'd like to identify is wind is moving air. So air is moving. How can you, how do you know it's moving? What do you see around? What are some examples of your life when you might see wind? Like when we're sailing, we have to like, sometimes like the sail moves so we can like move a different way. Yes, yeah, so you can see your sail flapping in the wind. So you can see the wind's effects on the sail. Any other? Wind gives us power from windmills and it helps us sail with non-motorized boats. That's very cool. So you, yeah, so you explained that wind helps push our sails and that it makes, it moves windmills for energy. So the movement can be used for power. Now I noticed this word right here, windometers. That's a really cool name. What I like about this is that you identified there's probably a tool to figure out how to measure the wind. Fortunately, it's not called a windometer, but that was a great guess. It's called an anemometer. Our educator is building student background knowledge while assessing what students may already know about the subject matter. All right. I noticed yeah. that you've got a design coming along. Could design. you? Well, can you tell me about your parts and kind of your reasoning behind this design? I, don't know, I kind of got the idea from the other ones. I'm trying to figure out how to make it still. So. Okay, so which way it's going? If this is being pushed by the wind, which way would it go? I'm pretty sure this way. You think or it would go no, this way? Maybe this way. Why did you change your mind? Because uh, if the air is going to go in here, then maybe it'll push the cup like this way. Oh, so you think the air is going to go in here and it's going to move Probably. the cup that way. Cool. Maybe. That's going to be really fun for us to test. I noticed that you're kind of far along with your design. Could you talk to me about your design and your reasoning behind it? This, the, the cup part, this is where the wind's going to go through and it's going to blow it and it's going to make it spin. Okay, so how's it functioning right now? By the wind. Yeah, let's hold it up and kind of see. Hmm, seems to be going back and forth right here. How is your design maybe making that happen? I, I feel like we need to make a circle here. Maybe if I pull these up. Maybe if you put them up more and support them. Cool, that would be a great strategy. That's a good redesign. Our educator is demonstrating a skill known as investigative questioning. Questions are formatted to lead students to create their own understanding of the subject matter, argue from evidence, and use investigative reasoning. As students utilize the engineering by design process, they are building their skills in scientific reasoning. By testing their design, students learn what works and what doesn't work. They apply this information to their new design and make adjustments to their anemometers. Students conduct wind speed tests on land and on water. They observe the differences in wind speed in multiple locations and measure it with their new anemometers. Students learn how to represent their data by recording it on the chart. They analyze the data and compute the average of their trials to learn more about the wind speed.